she said, no, she's not going to call Lufthansa. And she pushed my bag, threatened me with the police. Like, if you don't pack off, we would have to call the airport police. I'm like, no, I have to fly because I'm panicking. Really, I'm, 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 I'm losing my mind. What did I do? I'm confused, surprised, just um, desperate at the same time. I was just going nuts in my head, but calm at the same time. Everybody was just stop what they are doing and they're just looking at me and and I was just trembling. I was just shaking and there's a lockdown and I can't get on a flight that I've already paid for like a month ago. So in the worst case, if I'm not allowed on this flight, that means I have to buy another flight, right? I do not even have that money to buy an, another flight. I traveled to, to Mali to Ivory Coast, I went to Gambia, and I went to Senegal, and I'm, I'm coming back. The guy was like, yeah, yeah, you were a world traveler. You sound so dramatic. Police were already monitoring my moves because they already know the situation. Like, this guy is not at fault. There's a problem, and it's being covered up somewhere. So there's a chance he's going to be angry and maybe cause a scene. So let's, you know, intimidate him. I I've learned one thing. When things don't go right, um, when you get angry, when you don't check, put your emotions in check, it's going to go wrong. Even it's going to get worse. I took my bag and I started running. I was weak. At this time, I'm confused. I'm just running. I'm just moving around aimlessly like some stupid dude because I've lost my mind. I felt like I wasn't even present. I went the other way and then the police were saying, no, 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 you should have to come this way. No, 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 no you have to go this way. I'll... It was horrible. I... Uh, it was just, it was a mess. Yeah, it was a mess. I was running. It's more than two kilometers from the checking point where I got the boarding pass to where the airplane is. You can imagine the stress. In the plane, I was isolated. You know, very awkward situation in the airplane. I was being humiliated, criminalized. Like, they put me in that situation. And I know there are CCTV, so they can have access to the whole incident. And then in their response... It was just dry email, like, you know, hey, shut up, just go, go, go sit somewhere. Have you ever been racially discriminated, dehumanized, or even criminalized while passing through the airport because of your skin color? If you have, you're welcome on board. And if you haven't, well, good for you. Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope you all had a wonderful celebration. My name is Adachi Uchendo. If you're just joining for the first time and the program is Adachi Uchendo's Now Dress, this is where we do all things, anything and everything, travel. Let me digress a little bit. Did you guys notice actually that a lot of people fell ill this season? Yes, I wasn't fully under the weather, but thank God that I pulled through. And I want to thank everyone that called in and visited me. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all your prayers. And it's because of that that I am standing stronger today. Well, I started a story last year. A traumatizing story that trended towards the end of last year and then we have just concluded it about a young man that was criminalized you know dehumanized racially discriminated by the airline because of his skin color and the incident happened at Milan Malpensa International Airport to be precise after having gone through a whole lot of uh, trauma and disgrace and now he's not taking it and he's seeking for justice when I went through the story because it's a story I can very much relate with I have equally uh, been racially profiled while passing through the airports and the experience wasn't good at all so we reached out to uh, the guy and then he shared his experience uh, at the airport with us and how he was able to navigate and pull through that uh, situation let us all listen and also learn one or two things as passengers from him hello george hello adachi how yeah, are you doing um, yeah I'm, I'm keeping up it's a new year and um you know i unfortunately i didn't get to uh, experience the new year like i did last year on the 7th of december 2020 see how time really flies so this incident happened right after being in a really such a good mood in, in on holidays 
I'm looking at the memory of the pictures and the great times that I had in, on, on that vacation. And it's, that's the only thing I can just uh, live on, uh, on that memory, because uh, I still haven't really, you know, recovered from uh, the way I was treated at the airport. My name is George, and I've lived in the Netherlands for about 18 years now. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I studied in the Netherlands as well. So this is a return flight from Milan coming to uh, München, which is Germany, and from there to Brussels. And the incident happened at the counter of Lufthansa when I presented my valid tickets from that return flight at the Milan airport. I was told that they can't find my details in, in their system. In other words, my ticket is not valid. It came as a shock to me. At that point, I didn't know what to say, to be honest, but I was calm because it's a return flight, so there was no cause for alarm for me. I asked her for about three times, and then for the third time, she got annoyed. This is an older lady, and looking at her, she, she might have worked for the airline for maybe more than even 20 years. I didn't know what else to say than to just tell her to just look into it, and she would not do that. So I told her, can you please uh, call Lufthansa and check in the back office, see if there's something wrong? And she said no. You know, she was very unwilling to even uh, help me solve the pr problem that Lufthansa, of course, not me. And the conversation just got heated. There were people behind me boarding. Mind you, I was, I was there before even the counter was open. So when the situation got that way, her first instinct is to just get me out of the way. And I felt, no, that can happen. I mean, I have a valid ticket. I'm not going to step aside unless she has given me a solution if I can talk to one of her colleagues, because obviously there were three people at, at that uh, uh, check in Bali. If she referred me to one of them to take care of me so she can take care of the rest, that will calm me down. But taking the tack off my back and pushing my back to me and not telling me what to do, yeah, there was no way I was, I was stepping aside. I was very surprised that this was happening to me. And I asked her, what can I do? I mean, I'm not from here. I'm not from Italy. So I cannot just go back home and go and resolve the problem. I have to be on this flight. And because of the lockdown in the Netherlands, I could not fly from there. So that's why I came through, uh, through Brussels. And she wasn't being cooperative. All the colleagues were less busy. She could have referred me to one of them to help me uh, uh, resolve whatever the problem was, but she didn't. Eventually, she threatened me with the police. At, at the point when she brought that threat in, I felt, I can't believe this is happening to me. I see these things happening, but I never assumed that it would happen to me because I'm somebody that I really prepare myself very well. I'm a frequent traveler. I've traveled a lot. And even as Lufthansa, I'm a frequent flyer of Lufthansa. I have their, uh, I'm on their program. So at this point, when she has taken the tag off my back and pushed it away, it was very disrespectful the way she did it. It, it got me shocked considering the fact that I'm on the, on the Amaz pro, uh, program. I expected a, a, a respect and a treatment. I felt like it's a race target. I wouldn't expect an European to be handled like the way I was handled. Before the police came, I asked her, like, how do we solve this situation? And then uh, she pointed, yeah, there was, um, 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 there's a ticket agent somewhere in the corner. You should just go there and sort yourself out, see how they, they, they will be able to help you. And I was like, no, but this is Lufthansa and you are working for Lufthansa. So why do I have to go anywhere? At that point, I already felt disrespected. There's no way a passenger, right, can be handled that way. A passenger with the valid details that you actually put a tag on his back before you even went further. There's no way you can, do, you can disrespect such a person like that if I wasn't black. So I calmed myself down a little bit, just went to, followed up, went to the ticket agent. It looked as if they already knew that I was coming and asked me for a, a consultation fee before they can even hear the problem. I knew that the money that I have at that time it would be enough to pay for the luggage, right? So if I will pay for a consultation fee, I won't be able to pay for the luggage. When I tried, I couldn't get Lufthansa on the phone. I decided to, okay, go and then make this payment because the time was approaching too. You know, the boarding time was approaching. I'm sweating. I cannot put the pieces together to see what's really happening, you know? And when you are in a situation like that, you'll do whatever it takes to just get out of there. When they asked me for consultation fee, right away, I knew 
they are not Lufthansa. This is a, a private entity, a, a separate entity. But I wanted to get out of the place, so I paid What's them. The uh, What's the name? Their name was A.R.E. Group. Okay. Yeah, if you, if you Google it like that, you will find them. And it also appeared on my bank statements as such. Okay. okay. After paying, they looked through it, and then they were on the phone speaking Italian. Within 10 minutes, they gave my papers back to me, printed another ticket with the same information, with the same code. They gave it to me, and then they told me, now I can go to continue boarding. And I felt ripped. Really, I felt ripped. Like, what did she do? I have information that is on my ticket that I presented for boarding. It's the same as what I got from this external ticket agent, and I paid them for that. So as if your ticket was just photocopied and given back to you. Exactly. It was just like if I received another photocopy of my ticket and just go back and it's okay. Now you can board. And I look at them like, really? What really happened? So I got the ticket. I joined the line again and, and then came back. This time, the time was very getting, the time was getting closer. So it's my turn now. And then uh, I give her my passport again and then the new ticket and then my old ticket as well because I had to make sure that she knows that the new ticket that I had to go and pay for and my old one, they are the same details. So at least she can tell me right there what happened. Her only concern was you have to pay for your courage back. And I told her, yes, uh, I know that I have to pay for it. At this moment, I do not have the money because I had to pay to that external uh, traveling agent to get my ticket right, which was not necessary. So lady, the money I have now will not be enough to pay for that luggage now. Maybe if you call Lufthansa and explain it to them and tell them what happened. And then she said, no. And I'm like, lady, look at the receipt here. I had to pay this lady. And if you put the money I have now together, it's even more than what I have to pay for this carriage. But because I had to pay that, I can't now. So maybe um, there's a solution is you can send me invoice when I get home. I'm going to pay. You have my details. I'm on a, a, a frequent flyer uh, program. You have all information about me. So I'm not going to run away from, from that. I travel. So I'm not going to block my future trip by running away or not paying uh, the invoice. And she said, no. At this point, she already, she's really, really agitated. She's ready to, to fight me for no reason I can really tell. It felt so personal and so, so, so humiliating. I, I, I can't explain the, the feeling I was going through right now. I can't explain it, you know, because whenever, you know, I think of that incident, it triggers certain things in me that, you know, we are in a new year and I don't, you know, the kind of energy if you, you want to be remembered by. But I have to say, it. Um, uh, now I have a boarding pass in my hand, but I can't go on the flight because now, second for the second time, I have a problem with my luggage now. Because if I don't pay the luggage, I can't leave the luggage also behind. If it was even possible that way, I would have left the luggage behind, fly to the Netherlands, and then, you know, get myself sorted and maybe come the next day. Or it's just a couple of hours flight away, you know, and so I would have come back and come and pick up my luggage. That's also not allowed. You're not allowed to leave your, your luggage behind. So this is where, at this point, it's just, you know, fight or or flee situation for me. And nobody was speaking for me. Nobody was even uh, trying to resolve the situation between me and their colleague. They just have to gang up and say whatever they had to say. And there was a male colleague. He stopped taking care of what he was doing, talking against me. And I'm only, I only want to get on the flight and I want a solution, right? First of all, it was your problem. It was your, it was, you are the reason why I can't even afford for this, my courage right now. So you have to think of something for me to get it because I'm not going anywhere. And then he said he's going to call the police. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just call the police. They already been watching me the whole, the whole airport has been watching me the whole time. I'm sweating. I'm, if they will come and arrest me for what reason, what, what have I done, right? I didn't care for, if they, I just even want them to come. Because at this point, the only person that can help you get out of a situation like this is the authorities. As much as it was humiliating, because this is the standard story of black men in Europe. When you stand up for your rights, they will call the police and police will come in and 
you know, you're going to get aggressive with them and then they're going to put handcuffs on you and take you away. And I could have been on the wrong side of the law, being like the person who didn't create the problem. I could have become the problem in the end. And I know this. I'm educated somebody uh, who I've seen a lot. I've worked with NGOs as well. I've, I've heard stories. I had no personally know people that, you know, go through these uh, type of situations uh, with the law just because they were refused and they stood, stood up fighting for their rights and police came and they got removed. So I wasn't going anywhere at this time. I'm like, it's either I get on this flight or, I mean, do whatever you want. And then uh, when I said that this is only a return flight, that means I've gone to other countries. I've gone to a lot of countries with the same ticket, with the same routes, right? Just returning back. And then he goes saying that... Um, yeah, I'm being dramatic by saying that I've tried. Yeah, you have seen the world. He made a comment like that. Yeah, you have gone everywhere, whatever, whatever. Just being dramatic with, you know, some hand gestures to go with. I wasn't going to fight back because to me, it's not even personal now. But they made it look personal. So I can get out of the topic, say certain things. And then and based on that, police, when police come, you are going to be charged based on that. I didn't want to go off topic because I knew how things were, you know, uh, eventually the direction was going. I already kind of uh, uh, was able to just figure it out quickly, you know. So um, eventually they called the police. And the police came. At this point, uh, you can tell that, you know, as much as, you know, we people of color, we have seen these things happen around the world. Passengers from other countries, they are aware of these scenarios as well. Right. So the moment the police comes in, they already know hey, hey, this is uh, this is not going to be nice. Right. It's going to be terrible. I, I stood my grounds and uh, waited for the police to come. And when they come, they said, take your bag and move away from the lady. And then they asked me what's happened. Not make the video longer. I narrated them exactly what happened. There were two male Italian police. They, they took my passport and they made a call. I don't know who they call, whatever. And then they came back to me. And then their tone was very strict. Like, we came here because of this and this and that. And you have to move your back. So I asked them, so what, what do I have to do now? And they said, yeah, they are, they are the airport security. They are there for the security. They can't intervene uh, uh, the problem. They can't get into the problem. And I'm like, if you want to solve the problem, you have to look at what caused the problem. So you cannot kind of just remove me and and let the problem be there. I can't sleep at this airport. You know, I was messed up. Everybody was just watching me. I felt incriminated the way they even spoke to me. The money, in me, even in my pocket, is not even enough to, to book a hotel if I decide not to fly. I'm really desperate now. And it was obvious that if I would go back and, and fight for whatever reasons, like for my rights, when the police come again, because that's where they, they gave me a warning. It was a warning, basically. When they will come back again, I was going to be arrested. So at this point, I have to think whether I want to be arrested or, you know, find a solution. Imagine if I have no money anywhere, right? If I had no money anywhere or there was nobody to help me get out of that place, uh, my only option will be just be the new sounds that, you know, they have created that I have to stand there till I get on the flight. And eventually I was going to get arrested for, for real. It was clear to me that if I would decide to stand there and fight, I was going to be arrested. And when you are in this situation, you can't really think straight. You just want to get out of the place, you know, no matter what your right is, you know, how you feel like that you've been humiliated and you've been criminalized and it's a traumatized situation everybody would think of safety in these kind of situations to so get out of the place and come home safe right and deal with it later on even if you uh, uh you, you don't have the ability you know the strength my all my strength was gone um i was i was humiliated man i, I was uh i really i was really humiliated and criminalized felt all kind of guilt uh, a girl that I didn't create for myself that had nothing to do with, with all that, you know. So, at the point where I've got the fact that 
I wasn't arrested. I wasn't aggressive. It was, for me, it was a signal like I'm doing the right things. So just, you know, just finish it, finish it up. Just continue. There was a voice in my head that uh, says that uh, don't go back and fight. You know, you know what's going to happen. Just try to, uh, 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 even if you have to go and, you know, beg money from somebody, uh, uh, airports, you know, people that know your story and, you know, you just show them your credibility that who you are and they will believe you and lend you some money. Just do that and come back. Don't, don't go and fight back because then you, you're going to be the loser here. I made a call and money was transferred from my business account into my personal account. At this point, everybody is gone, right? Everybody has bought the, bought, bought the flight. They're gone. It's just me, hello, me and my back and my sweat. Oh, I'm just sweating. Uh, I look awful, you know, but I didn't even think about how I look at that time. You know, neither do I even care about how I look now because I just want to tell the story. When I got into the flight, you know, the people that were already seated, they witnessed what happened at the check-in. There was all eyes on me. It just the humiliation just kept continuing. It, I don't know if it's for everybody, but for me, when 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 I'm under that amount of pressure, my neck start hurt. I can't even really turn this way at that time, and that was how intense you know the whole experience was for me. It was very unusual i've traveled a lot and i've never had such an experience like that ever in my life probably i was the only black person on a plane to be honest and you can imagine the looks and all that i just went to sit down uh pick my book the book is still here it's a uh, homo deus i started reading it and um it was hard for me to concentrate I've been a reader like since my childhood, so I really love reading. It's a therapy for me where I can just, you know, zoom out in that environment and just, you know, get into it. I hope my, uh, my mom is, is watching this video. This is a reference that she always make because when I'm reading, when they call me, I can't hear. Even when his food is ready, they'll call me. I will not respond because that's how much I love reading. My, my nieces, my relatives, they all know this, you know? So... But at that point, I had to read one page for, for, this, for the five minutes going over and over because it wasn't registering. You know, I still haven't really, you know, emotionally, I haven't psychologically, I haven't uh, settled down. And the, the effect was so strong that it took me some time. But I was in that posture of reading. Whenever I go through that super stress you know, situation, my neck and my back, I can't really tilt it well. And eventually I read myself till I, I arrived. München, you know, Germans call, they call it München, but to English speakers who say Munich, Bayern Munich football club, like everybody know, because that's a Lufthansa's headquarters, whatever. So, and when we arrived, I checked out all eyes on me from the airport. Uh, mind you, this connecting flight, it goes to Munich and from Munich, it goes to Brussels. So I had to wait for four hours, maybe even more, at the airport, right, to get on the next flight from Munich uh, to Brussels, which would be my final destination. So when I got there, the feeling it was still there because I'm seeing the, the, the police there. Uh, where I sat, they were just parading next to me, just going left and right, and not far away from me. And just to be sure that I wasn't monitored, I went to them and then asked them, I, I would like to charge my phone. And then they pointed out where I can charge. There's a smoking lounge. And it eventually they walk with me. So I noticed this when I went to the, uh, uh, the smoking lounge. It's a glass house, kind of. So you can see what's happening outside, even though if you are in. I noticed that the same police, they have changed their location. And now they are with me again. Because mind you, if I cal calculate right, they were going five meters on my left, five meters on my right, just staying with me, basically. You know, guard me or look look at me on, the, on, on, on my second location, which is far away from where I was. So at that point, I knew that they were really uh, uh, there because of me. And when I was able to be calm, charge my phone, I went straight to the only counter of uh, uh, Lufthansa that I saw in, in my side. I went there. When I spoke to the lady, I told her uh, I had this incident and I want to make a report of it. So she handed me um, a brochure 
with the instructions and informations and the contact email and all the details that I need to make my, uh, my complaint. So when I, I reached home, I made this complaint directly to Lufthansa. And then if I remember correctly, within uh, two, two weeks or uh, a week, I got a response that was very automatic. You know, the standard customer service email for complaints. It was not tailored. Uh, we are sorry for your experience, this, that, that. And there was no reason why that happened in the first place. Why I encountered that situation. I wanted to hear that, find out the source of that problem. So I wasn't satisfied. They, they are not even showing no remorse, which means what happened at the airport, it probably haven't been got to the, the highest authority or they haven't even you know, uh, uh, taking it serious. That response alone just triggered also the fact that they didn't take me serious because I'm African. These things happen. You know, I have some some, some white friends, and if I, I told them the story, they said, hey, you, you, bro, you don't even have to say the race thing. This will not happen to me. They, they were straightforward, tell me that this is what happened. It happened because you are black. And I have these friends around that, you know, would not flinch to uh, to admit it that my case was was a racial racial profiling case. So I took the case to an arbitration. I you know let them know that I'm really uh, not going to back away from back out from this this case. I need to see justice. We'll go into the details of that maybe in a, another episode. But for now, uh, what I want to uh, let uh, the viewers or the listeners of my story know is that. The incident that happened to me, I'm only alive now to talk about it because of the way, you know, I handled it. When I tell my story to, to people, everybody applaud me for, uh, for staying calm, giving them the space to resolve the, whatever the issue that happened at the airport and not overreact, fight back because that's a stigma. That's basically, that's what happened to uh, a lot of black people, black men and women. Uh, you can easily be provoked into that kind of mood where you will come up and say something or do something crazy, and then they will use it as an excuse to get you out of the way. Even if, you know, your story is right, you will not even have the, the chance to, to fight for it because then you are out of the way. They, you know, set you up to cause that. To, because you will react. It's, it's normal for a human being to you know, to, to react in that kind of situation. And especially when you know, you know, our group of people, black men and women, you know, there are evidence that we've been more treated around the world. You know, see what we've gone through. You, you know that this is what they have been doing for, for years. So in that position, uh, I thought about it. And then I would advise anybody that is watching this too, when you get into such a situation, a lot can go wrong depending on you, right? I would use that scene, for example, uh, when the police came and then they left, I could have chosen to stay there and say, no, I'm not going anywhere and be arrested and uh, charged for being aggressive, right? And that remove you from the scene. I mean, your case, and you, you, who knows, maybe, you know, they might find something on you, your paper, one of something, your paper is not right, you know, there's something wrong with your passport, and, you know, although they will find something, trust me, you know, they will find something on you to get you not to even speak about uh, 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 the situation that caused that scenario in the first place. So when you are in a position like this, um, calm your emotions and use your head. I knew I was not guilty of anything. And because of that, that was uh, uh, my motivation to, to, be, to be that calm. If I had done something wrong, I would have been paranoid and probably find an excuse for them as if it's normal to be treated like that. No, it's not normal. I don't see my white friends in the Netherlands or anywhere. We, I've been traveling around the world. I've been uh, surrounded by white friends a lot in, in, wherever I go. The university I went uh, it was an international university. We had about more than 10 nationalities, Americans, Canadians. So I have a lot of friends. I've been in multinational environments a lot. So I know when I'm going through certain things, they know it. They feel it. They, they see what happened. They saw what happened to me. 
No, they know it. We talk about this. I'm not hiding this. And when they call me, sometimes, you know, they were like, yo, how you doing, man? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm just keeping up. It's like, wow, you a strong guy to go through that, you know? And I'm like, yeah, there's no other way to, 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 to fight this than, you know, just to calm down. If you get angry, it will not solve the, who, you know, it's not going to solve the problem. So you just have to be calm, collect your evidences, and think about the solution for later. Make sure that you are being cooperative, right? That you don't let them get out of your feelings and start overreact. Because the moment you let emotions, you know, take over, you're going to lose uh, uh, the reality of what's really happening, you know. And based on that, you're going to lose in the end. This is really very pathetic, you know. So when you talk about collecting evidence, yeah. did you actually plan to go to the arbitration before? I wouldn't go to arbitration. I wouldn't even go that far. When I contacted Lufthansa, <clears throat> the customer service with my complaint, my expectations was still give them the time to, to resolve the issue with me because that's what a frequent flyer for somebody that holds the airline to that high esteem will do. I wouldn't have taken the case to arbitration if they seized that opportunity to apologize to me and answered my questions. Basically, those questions were, were very simple, like what happened and why was I treated that way? You know, I'm curious. It would have given me some peace. And Lufthansa did not respond to me. They treated me as if what happened at Milan did not even happen. Like it didn't exist. That's, that's the treatment. Even though I went through all those traumat uh, traumatized experiences, I didn't want that. But because of their response and after that, the kind of uh, treatment I started receiving because when they took my passport at the airport, they made a call. I don't live in Italy. So if they will pick up your, your, your passports, they will call your resident. That's your home. So at that point, I knew the Dutch government didn't know which that I was there. Right? That's first point. And the second point was when Lufthansa tried to block the arbitration, it became very clear to me that they were not willing to to resolve the issue with me. Instead, they develop a tactic to let people in the government in the Netherlands bully me to back away from the story because I was quiet. You can imagine, most people will not even contact Lufthansa. They will go straight online and just blast about it. The fact that I was quiet, I was able to, uh, uh, even aftermath all the traumatized situation, mind you, I haven't told you. I went to my doctor for a different reason to go and have like a, a, a general checkup. And then she told me, I think you, you have to speak to uh, my colleague, a uh, psychological doctor. So I had about two, three weeks sections of, of that, going through that traumatized. And they know it, these are there, they are there. The government know it because these are all well-documented incidents. They know the place, they know the time I have, all the details of, of that, you know, session that I had to do with the doctor, and all because of this incident. Instead, I was being bullied to back away from the story. The humiliation really continues to this day. And this is the reason why I need to put it out because uh, it's about my life too, you know, and people need to know that this is what I'm dealing with now, even I'm still going through now. The impact of what happened after March, and taking the case up to that level has put a lot of target on me. And I know it. They know it. I'm not going to go in details into who is this doctor and who is this and who is that was organization yet. I hope they don't let me get to that point. I'm still out for, for justice to be served. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us and for finding time, even in this distressful moment, to advise passengers. Thank you so much. It's very much welcomed and you are really a very strong guy for the way you comported yourself. You know, it shows you have a lot of uh, self-constraint. Now judge is calling for justice for whatever that happened to him that day at Milan airport. And he's 
looking onto you netizens to help him get justice that's the essence of sharing this story with you people also i want us to take something out of the story because i've always advised passengers that when things don't go the way it's supposed to go or the way they want it while passing through the airport they should not throw tantrums they should not fight i don't believe in being violent i don't believe in being disruptive always keep your anger in check especially when you're in public you know domain because if you don't a lot of things could go wrong this has always been my advice to you know passengers you have no right whatsoever to behave violently towards another human being you know it's totally not acceptable do not abuse the airline officials do not abuse the cabin crew do not try to destroy any uh, uh, airport properties believe me you are going to get yourself into a whole lot of trouble number one you're going to be arrested you're going to be locked up and if you had destroyed anything at the airport you'll be made to pay you might be banned from flying with that particular airline your holiday your business trip everything is ruined you're not going to like what will happen to you when you engage in it's such a behavior at the airports. So I will always tell you, take things easy. Obey airport officials. You can go home later on and document your ordeal and seek justice legally. And trust me, justice will be served. It might take a while though, but it will be served. So let us be wise in our journey. Let us journey with wisdom, okay? Encourage. it. Pack it. Have it as one of the things that you must pack when you're traveling. Don't ever leave home without these things that I've told you. Your wisdom, a lot of it, and a lot of patience. It will help you navigate through your journey. So I want everyone to stay healthy and have a very happy new year.